all right guys welcome back now we're going to discuss about the assumptions of the stoke law okay so the assumptions here we are assuming in the stokes law that all our particles are round in structure so but but literally like uh, are the particles are all the particles of the round in structure we don't think so we have no idea what the shape of the particles could be because for example let's assume you're making a suspensions uh, for a pediatric patient by crushing a tablet you made a suspension obviously when you're crushing you're not sure that all of your particles are round in shape right so it's an assumption in the Stokes law that all the particles are around in structure and the other assumption is that about the Brownian motion okay so Brownian motion is something that random movement of the particles when it is in some medium so for example let's assume that this particular particle is moving like weirdly like up and down like some, some random movement like this so it's going to be affecting its settlement right if there's a Brownian motion the Brownian motion is nothing but the random random motion right random motion so this particle for this particle we assume that it is not undergoing this random moment it's just taking a straight path it's just taking a straight path that's a straight path we assume that it's going settling down straight and the other you know consideration is we in the Stokes law it is assumed that there are no electrokinetic motions the electrokinetic motions in the sense let's say assume the charge of this particle is is positive and the charge of this particle is also positive and if these two particles come closer obviously they just repel right let's assume let's assume this particle this is a beaker and this is particle a and this is particle B. Obviously, these these are this heavy. There won't be any electrokinetic motions. But let's assume like this is one particle, and this is positive charge, and this is positive charge. These two particles, if they come closer, obviously they re they repel each other, right? They repel e with each other, and they'll move apart. But in in Stokes' law, we assume that there are no electrokinetic motions no electrokinetic motion okay and no brownian motion no brownian motion and particles are spheres that's what the stokes law assumes and also stokes law assumes that there are no aggregations aggregation no aggregation that means let's assume this particle is aggregating with this particle okay then they just aggregate it together so now it's just one particle and the sedimentation rate will be higher so Stokes law assumes that there are no aggregations and also Stokes law assumes that the suspensions are dilute suspensions are dilute okay that means less than 2% weight by volume so Stokes law assumes that suspensions are dilute and Stokes law assumes the other thing that all the particles will have the same velocity so particle this is one particle and this is one particle and Stokes law assumes that all the particles will have the same velocity which is not true obviously it may have but Stokes law's assumptions these are the assumptions that Stokes law is undergoing okay so but in reality in reality there are some forces that act on suspensions okay forces on suspensions so what are the forces that are acting on suspensions according to what we have discussed earlier which you may notice only the gravitational force that's what we have discussed that is acting right uh, gravitational force that's what we have discussed 
but in reality there is an interfacial tension interfacial tension that is existing okay and also there is an inter interparticulate interparticulate force that is acting on the suspensions so these are the various and these are the assumptions that we have discussed so far uh, for Stokes' law. Okay, let's do a, a quick example now in the next uh, YouTube video.